Hi, I'm Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications. Welcome to another episode of Why Like Ike, shot right here in the Ike family home in Abilene, Kansas. First time I've ever been in here. Well, welcome. William Snyder, Pam Sanfilippo, my two experts. They're gonna guide us through the home today. Uh, this is a special uh, edition for Mother's Day, and right. so we're focusing on Ida Eisenhower. That's right. All right, start us off. Where are we at? Well, we are in the front parlor of the Eisenhower Boyhood Home, and this is a special room for us because uh, this was never used by the family except for those special occasions. So Ike is one of six boys. If you can imagine in this tiny house, it just got one room smaller that they weren't allowed in. Pam and I can tell you that when you have six boys, if you don't keep them out of one room, you won't have a special room, right, Pam? That's right. And it was a home. I like to, to point out the difference between a home and a, a house, and it was Ida yeah. who made it a home yeah. for the family. She's it's easy to see. Uh, my first time in, and I've taken a little quick tour, uh, we're standing in front of the bookcase full of books of the period, uh, which uh, the Google is right behind us. Okay. <laughs> the Google of the day. The yes. Google of the day is right behind mm -hmm. us. And, and what a fascinating thought to think of Dwight David Eisenhower growing up here uh, with the books of knowledge and encyclopedia set. That's right. Uh, well, fascinating. Well, education was very important for the family, and both Ida and David uh, had been to college. That's actually where they met and got married at Lane College in Lecompton, Kansas. Really? Yes. And they encouraged all of their boys to read, and they all had to go to college, but they had to fund it for themselves. So no student loans in those days. No student loans, right. And an excellent prep with having all the books here at home. And, and That's right. We actually do have quite a few of them that you can see. Uh, little kids have drawn in some of mom and dad's college textbooks and written yeah. their names. So. This is a place where I really should just put my hands in my pocket so you yes, don't please. slap them. <laughs> because oh, that has such, I just want to look at that. I just want to touch that. I want to see that. that. Books are fascinating to me, and I've passed it on to at least one of my uh, children. My youngest daughter just is absolutely in love with books, That's which is a good thing. It Excellent. is. Okay, so Ida preserved this special place mm -hmm. for her family, That's right. and she preserved learning yes, by did. storing books and preserved a, uh, an atmosphere of, of a nice place. That's right. We like to think so. It's definitely yeah. very much a home. Um, Ida lived here almost 50 years. Okay. So, um, there are some changes that you know went around. We do sure. uh, even back then, even though they were decorating on a shoestring. You know, <laughs> Ida added uh, a few new pieces of furniture from time to time. So yeah. this is probably what the home looked like about the time of her death in mm -hmm. 1946. Lovely rug. I don't know if Dave got a shot of it or he can on the way when we go to the next room. But the colors still just jump out at you. Yes. And we're very fortunate all of the uh, furnishings in the home are original, so very fortunate. Not many historic homes are so fortunate. What are the photographs on the wall? Um, well, over here on uh, this wall, which is the first wall our visitors see, we get uh, Ida and David's marriage certificate from mm -hmm. 1885. Mm -hmm. And on either side of them are the girls' class and the boys' class uh, from Lane College from their years at Oh, Rogers. that's cool. That, that's, that's Ida's special room then, isn't it, right. Pam? And that's a real the, testament to her photographs. Uh, the education that they felt was so important. Yeah. And, of course, her story begins much earlier than, than the marriage and, and even her attending college. College. Um, I think she brought some of those self-sufficient skills with her all the way through. Uh, she was born in Virginia in the middle of the Civil War and uh, orphaned at age 11. Mm -hmm made the journey out here to Kansas from Virginia when she was a teenager. Um, the fact that she had attended Lane College was amazing for a woman of that period. Yes. There were very few colleges mm -hmm. that even admitted women mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so in LeCompton, right? Is Correct. That, okay. Was, it wasn't that the first historic territorial capital of Kansas? It was. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing about Eisenhower. <laughs> okay. I, I'm confident Dave had his camera pointing at it, so he's standing right next to the <laughs> family Bible, that's which right. is the record, not only the the Word of God in a, in, in a, it's ensconced here in their home. <laughs> But it was also the record of the Eisenhower family because that's where the records were kept. That's right, of the births of the seven boys. Uh, yes. Uh, Ike was number three, and his name is recorded as D. Dwight. Mm -hmm. So he was actually christened David Dwight, mm -hmm. uh, somewhat after his father. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when he entered um, 
At West Point, he actually switched the order of his name, so it became Dwight David as we know him today. Um, but as I mentioned, it's seven boys. Paul, who was number five, died before he was a year old of diphtheria. This is, uh, this is uh, just an, a piece of history of growing up at that time in America. Mm -hmm. um, that is not unusual to have the family with a loss of a, of a young one mm -hmm. and, uh, before they could reach age. Mm -hmm. yep. So pretty amazing that all six of the remaining six boys you know, survived to adulthood and, mm -hmm. as we mentioned before, all went to, on to college and, uh, and became you know, very much self-made men. Okay, it, when people come to the home, um, mm -hmm. um, they'll walk in that door and then they'll turn left into this room. Mm -hmm. But when they walk in the door, uh, you mentioned to me that's the original wall mm -hmm. because the house two-story, here right. it goes up, right. and what they'll see on the east was added later. That's right. A couple of years um, after the family moved in, they took in Grandpa Eisenhower mm -hmm. to move with them, and they needed a couple more bedrooms, so they added a one-story wing with a bedroom for Mom and Dad and a bedroom for Grandpa. And because this program's all about Ida for Mother's Day, mm -hmm. you know, I, the first thing I saw when I looked in that room is her sewing machine. Much like my mother, with mm -hmm. an old Singer sewing machine, mm -hmm. it was the heart and soul of the produce for the family. There were two things that produced for the family. Sewing machine was one. Mm -hmm. The kitchen was the other, and we'll see that here in a little while. Yes, we will. And uh, we're also very fortunate in that most of the handiwork you see around the home, the lace doilies on the chairs, on the tables, um, some of the crazy quilt pillows we're going to see in the next room, those were all made by Mrs. Eisenhower. Pam, the last time I saw you, you had a bunch of sophomores in high school in your uh, research room the other day, and uh, we had a short visit. It has to be kind of special for you to be standing in front of this bookcase. Oh, yes. Um, books, you know, um, tell so much not only about uh, the time period, but about who was actually reading them, what what things were of interest to the family. There are a lot of uh, religious books, and kind of the Bible was the center of the family. Each evening they would um, begin, uh, gather together as a family in the room we'll be going into next. Or maybe that's a good segue. That's a good segue. <laughs> um, to uh, read from the Bible and read other stories. Okay, we'll so. let William lead us along. So, my favorite piece of furniture in my new visit here, yes. right behind me. What is it? Oh, the, the fainting couch? This yes. Is, um, I, but it's, I, and, and no sitting, please. I, 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 I was about to touch it. I was going to point out that it's mm -hmm. all hand stapled, of course, but it's yes. quite obviously hand stapled. Yes. So, I, I think the family may have made a few repairs over mm -hmm. the years. As you can mm -hmm. imagine, uh, six rambunctious boys jumping on a leather yes. sofa might yes. uh, cause a little wear and tear. But like we say, they made them the last in those that's, days. Yeah, that's they very did. true. So in addition to the evening uh, Bible study, uh, book readings, and family gatherings, um, this is probably Ida's most prized possession is her piano. Uh, she actually was able to purchase that two years before they got married uh, with a small legacy that she inherited from her grandfather. And so she brought this into the home. Uh, she taught all six boys to play the piano. Uh, Ike gave it up as soon as he could. He did not enjoy it. Uh, but Arthur, the oldest, and Milton, the youngest, continued to play for the rest of yeah. their lives. Lots of artifacts in this room that have significance. Um, the shortwave radio over there that you said has some history. That wasn't original here. The shortwave radio <laughs> wasn't here when they moved in. Not when they moved in so in 1898. But it was added for a purpose, I'm sure. That's right. In 1942, uh, the brothers purchased this for Mom so that uh, as a shortwave, she could actually pick up European news news and so she could listen to the war news and mm. hear how Ike was doing. Isn't that something? And actually got to hear his voice over over that radio. It's it's not too hard, Pam, to imagine Ida sitting here or there in that chair or even in the little rocking chair right there in front of the radio listening for the news of her son. That's mm -hmm. a picture so many mothers did in World War II. Maybe yeah, without the benefit of a shortwave, but right. everybody <laughs> gathered around the radio to hear the news of the day of, of exactly. the war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, there's something on the little rocking chair somebody needs to speak to. That is a handmade quilted covered pillow with mm -hmm. all the names of the boys on it. Yes, um, though, again, uh, that was made by Ida. Uh, you'll see it's sort of a crazy quilt top, and she embroidered all of the family names on it, and there's actually two more uh, crazy quilt pillows behind Pam there on the fainting couch that you like so much. Uh, again, those were made by Mrs. Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. And the red, white, and blue 
coverlet that is on it was actually woven by great grandpa Eisenhower back in Pennsylvania. And so that artifact came west with the family when they and moved. And you were telling me he was a, a, a weaver by trade. Yes, an itinerant weaver. So okay. he would go from town to town. And as the people collected yarns and wools and things for, you know, they needed a new blanket or something, mm -hmm. he would weave whatever the community right. wanted and then move on to the next town. Uh, you know, we're in Abilene, Kansas, so we're very proud to be here. Um, we, we shoot Why Like Ike as an exposure for the rest of the world through the lens of the camera. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that, um, that I can't help myself from grasping onto is the fact that that is the original entrepreneur, the American entrepreneur. They picked up their trade, some tools, mm -hmm. and moved to where the work was. Right. And uh, as, as one accumulated more people in the area, then one could stay home and do the same work because there were enough people around you to do that. What an incredible uh, lesson we can learn from that, you know, here in Ida's house about how America was built and, right. and why we're so blessed to be here in Abilene, Kansas. Yes. And the opportunity that was available. Um, not everybody could just pick up and move. But That's right. The fact that both of them, uh, both of their families did that, um, came here to, to start new lives and succeed. <laughs> I think Ida had to have loved this home. I mean, I walked, I've been here a little over a half an hour and I love this home. It's just home. It, it is home. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it does feel very much like coming home. So mm -hmm. it, it's. You know, certainly, I enjoy uh, my part of my job I'm sure I get to come do. over here, and uh, you know, even if we're working, we're still taking care of mom's house. And I, it's a I think it's just, to do that. It's just fascinating where Dave is standing. He's standing right in the pocket doors. That's right. And, and frankly, that's a tiny room in today's world. Very this good. is a tiny room in mm -hmm. today's world. Mm -hmm. Yet, that, to make that a special room, somebody invested in pocket doors mm -hmm. to build them buy them, install them, maintain them, mm -hmm. all of those things. That was part of making a room special. That's right. And you know, you could open it up and widen the area, but still that dividing line, when I look at it, there's a door there. That's right. They're in the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Ida was the heart of the home, no matter where mm. she was in the house, I would, I would say. And she was honored for her role um, in 1945, is that Yes, 1945. Correct? William, um, as uh, Mother of the Year in Kansas, the inaugural. Isn't first. that interesting? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Yes. That's a, that's a fascinating, uh, fascinating thought. You know, we we're filming this on behalf of Ida for Mother's Day, and and we think of raising six sons. Um, we're standing in evidence of hard pioneer work from Grandfather Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're here, you, uh, you're a young man, I'm an older man, and Pam's right Thank in the you. middle of us, and, and <laughs> helping, helping us look good. That's so, you know, <laughs> the, but the reality of it is, is uh, the connection from Grandpa Eisenhower, which is right there, mm -hmm. all the way to you as a curator of this place, is linkage that's important that Eisenhower left for us to benefit from, to what right. David Eisenhower left for us to benefit from by putting his library and museum here. Yes. In Abilene, we're so very mm -hmm. fortunate. Yes. Absolutely. Very fortunate. I, I see you have the pictures of the two brothers who kept playing the piano yes. <laughs> on top of yes, the piano. Yes, we have piano. a, a, a wonderful uh, picture of, of mom smiling yeah. out in the garden. Uh, and then uh, Arthur, the oldest son, and Milton, the youngest, who, uh, as we mentioned, continued to play piano for the rest of their lives. I think it's in the entryway where I saw the picture of Ida, and I asked you how old was she at mm -hmm. the time. You said it was during World War II, so we did some math, and that was closing in on 80, 80-ish. Mm -hmm. 80 80-ish. And, and uh, uh, I looked at her hands, because you told me about all the handwork in here. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her hands, and there's very little evidence in her hands of arthritis. So, you know, she was, and her mm -hmm. skin, is smooth. Mm -hmm. uh, her eyes are bright in yes. that photo. I mean, it just pops out at you. She, at that age, was still a very vibrant, healthy woman who could accomplish Absolutely. the things she wanted to today. That's right. Yeah. Fascinating. All right. Where are we going next, William? We're going to step into the dining room. The dining room. Okay. Right behind you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
in the dining room. This is one of the larger rooms, really. Yes. Uh, and so when I came here the first time, you told me this was the original house. Pam was telling me this is the, and we both said kitchen. It was the kitchen because in the houses right. of the day, the largest room was always the kitchen if you had a family. That's right. This was originally both the kitchen and dining room combined. Mm -hmm. And the break front right behind us, was, that's where the coal stove originally sat that mom did all the cooking right. on. Right. And so about where I'm standing is probably where they took their weekly baths in a galvanized <laughs> bathtub. Yeah. Uh, and But right behind us, if Dave can get a shot of that, that was originally Grandpa Eisenhower's bedroom when he moved in <laughs> with the family. Uh, but after he passed away and the city ran water and sewer out this far into the country. Yeah, way out here. Way out here. <laughs> the, the family actually installed the bathroom in 1908, so that means Ike was 18 before he lived in a house with indoor plumbing. Yeah. It's a, this is a fascinating room uh, to stand in. Mm -hmm. uh, to Dave's left is the, is, is the receptacle where bread is made and stored, really. That's the dough box, mm -hmm. if you will. Okay. That, right. that thing just has life pouring out of it, if mm -hmm. you look at it. And it's, it's rather fun because uh, many of our visitors don't know what it is, and they mm -hmm. often think it's a crib or something like that. <laughs> a yes, crib for, with a lid? <laughs> yes, for bad babies. You know, put the lid back. No, just kidding, just kidding. No, that was mom's dough box. Mm -hmm. so the, the bread dough would rise, and then you would knead it on the work surface on top. Yeah. And she made nine loaves of bread every other day for And I'm, a, I'm creeping into your picture, Dave, so stay on the dough box. I want to give people a scale of how, how, what the size it is, OK? This wide, <laughs> this long, that's how you made bread and made nine loaves every other day and fed a family. That's right. And it was probably just the right height. Perfect for height for Ida. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you Both that was. Or needing it <laughs> right. low and, and then yeah. the top. And we have, uh, we have uh, the home that as I stand here with my bare feet, with my yes. sock feet, I should say, yes. I can feel the joint in the floor. Mm -hmm. It's quite obviously right here and uh, what the support mechanism underneath, but it, you know, in your business, the, it begs questions. I wonder why. So, <laughs> you've probably never been under the house. Oh, though, sure, have absolutely. Have you? Absolutely, I've been in the cellar. Um, oh my. Uh, in addition to the, uh, the bread, mom also canned between 400 and 500 quarts of fruits and vegetables every summer for the family to live on during the winter. They had a huge garden yeah. um, about where the Presidential Museum sits now. So that's where they, raise their own food. And Pam, you have a pro you guys have a program where kids come here every year and and restart a garden and learn about that at the very least. They have probably done don't that. produce five hundred quarts of beans anymore, <laughs> but but they have and a chance to learn. Right. And each of the boys had their own section of the garden that they could grow whatever they want and then sell it on their own to make a little money themselves. That was their entrepreneurs. Uh, right. yeah. Exactly. And Ike has a a great story that um, he was the only child born in Texas and while they were living in Texas his mother learned how to make Mexican hot tamales and uh, when they moved up here and he had the garden and wanted to make some extra money he had his mom teach him how to cook all the boys learned how to cook sew and clean mm -hmm. um, but he learned how to make those tamales and then sold them here in Abilene really? for uh, three for five cents. Three for five three tamales cents. tamales for five cents. Wow. <laughs> I learn so much every time we film a Why Like mm -hmm. Ike. It's an incredible opportunity and, and, and because I get to come here with a camera all the time and can tell you I learn so much every time. Imagine what you could learn if you took the time to come and interface with these folks here. So okay, you know, um, we're going to head for the what became the kitchen for okay. this house after it grew a little bit and look at some my favorite artifacts in there. But before we leave uh, this area, uh, I, uh, I noticed over on the side um, bar over there that there's some uh, china and I found how interesting it is that uh, there's china there because my family experiences, people went to war, they sent artifacts back that they could afford and, and for their mother at home and um, all, my mom and all of her sisters has similar gifts from people across the way mm -hmm. when they were over there and it's, it's fascinating to look at, at that. So you probably know what that is and can tell us. Uh, this is actually uh, the commemorative bicentennial of George Washington's birth 
China that Ike and Mamie gave to Ida and David uh, for one of their wedding anniversaries. Okay. And actually right above the china is a wonderful portrait of Ida and David sitting in the front parlor for the 50th wedding anniversary. That's a magnificent yeah. picture. Yeah. We, we looked at that closely mm -hmm. earlier and uh, they, they got to set in a special room, didn't they, Pam? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 50 <laughs> years of marriage, you I can say. <laughs> And there's, there's one more pair of photographs just to Dave's left behind him that uh, we love to point out to our visitors and they absolutely love. Uh, the photograph on the left was taken in 1902. Uh -huh. It's mom and dad and the six boys. Uh, Milton in a dress. Yes, Milton in a dress with yes. long hair before his first yes. haircut. Yes, and as was the way it was in, the way in it was. those days. Absolutely. And uh, the photograph to the right of that was taken 24 years later in 1926. Yeah. Uh, the family's in the same positions. You can see Ike on the left there in his military uniform. He had just graduated top of his class from the Command and General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth. Yeah, had to be, had to be a fun yeah. day. Um, you know, I think we said earlier in the, in the, in the uh, formal uh, living area, if you will. What yeah. would we call the room, Pam? The front parlor. The front parlor. Uh, with the books of knowledge behind us, the Google of the day. Well, there's the Instagram of the day. <laughs> um, there, there is a, the early family and reproduced again. And there's no accident. It's in the same order. No, no. I, I'm pretty sure that mom planned that. Ida planned that. Okay. A proud mom in both pictures. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's go to where Ida probably spent a good percentage of her time as, mm -hmm. a, as a young mother. So, yes. Pam, lead us off. Oh. All right. Do we step over the threshold that's had a million steps on it? Yes. You yeah. see that? I, this is a tiny, even tinier room. I'm going I'm to stay sure. over. I'm going to okay. stay over here so you and Pam can get in the picture. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> because it's a tiny room, but it's a full of a productive machine, isn't it, Pam? Yes. Uh, this, is, uh, this kitchen was added in 1915, so Mom got her separate kitchen and dining room finally. Uh, after they'd lived in the home for about 17 years. Uh, while this looks fairly typical probably to our eyes of a sto uh, stove of the period, it's actually a state of the art. Oh, yes. Uh, because it could be coal, gas, or wood fired, all three. Right. right. And the principal and I, reason for that was you know, there was a the thought that certain recipes tasted better cooked exactly. certain ways. And I, I have my fingers interlocked here so I don't <laughs> touch it. I just, yes. I'm, having, I'm having a hard time not I, touching this I, one. I really want to touch that. I'm glad Sam left or I'd have scars on my knuckles by <laughs> now. So, you know, it's, it's what a fantastic uh, look at what it was that the Eisenhower family used to produce not only health here, mm -hmm. but with canning, you're also producing wealth because you're feeding your family in a way through the winter that's of your work in the summer. And if you don't do that, then you're laying cash out for food from other people. So and I'm sure fantastic. All the boys were in here helping and involved in. If they did 500 <laughs> quarts, there were. Yes, probably so. <laughs> and that is one of mom's uh, later canning pressure pots. So. Isn't, yeah. Yeah. We, we had a lot of this going on in my home growing up. I think all families did where we were at that point in time, but uh, the uh, fantastic look. If people need to come to the boyhood home and take a tour and stand there and look at this, this yeah. is something you just won't see, and it certainly won't see one that Ida Eisenhower produced for her family on, which is a special thing. That's right, that's right. And I think a testament to her as a uh, mother of, of six boys is that shortly after, I guess it was after she received the award for Mother of the Year, a reporter asked her, um, aren't you proud of your famous son? And she said, well, of course. Which one? <laughs> so all yes. six boys were, Very were famous to well, her Well us. said. Good well mom said. answer. Yeah. <laughs> Got a hand coffee grinder up on top of the cupboard mm -hmm. yes. and a tiny little cupboard yes. with a with a with a galvanized uh, metal work area on top of it that's right so when she wasn't kneading dough out in the dough box mm -hmm. um, this would have been her work surface so yeah where yeah. she rolled it out mm -hmm. turned yeah. it into something that's right but it's just small uh, it, everything is small i don't think mm -hmm. i don't think that is uh, i don't think that's a history that's unknown to people but our point today about Ida Eisenhower is this is the lady who raised the man who gave the world a second chance at freedom.
and Dwight David Eisenhower and uh, just uh, reminds us again of the importance of family and Dwight David Eisenhower has, has the ability to show us that lesson again here right. in, uh, in Abilene, Kansas. Parting shots. Um, thank you for coming. You're very we welcome. Hope, we hope everybody comes and, and gets to tour the boyhood home along with the rest of the Presidential Library and uh, see what we've been talking about today. Fantastic opportunity, Pam. Thanks for showing us through. Yeah. Uh, it, it's been very, very fun for me. I really enjoyed it. One thing I know we missed, I want to say, uh, there's a C.L. Brown telephone on the wall in there that came later in life again, part of Abilene. Uh, this is a foundation of many things That's right. and, that have benefited America. Abilene, Kansas has generated wealth for America from uh, more than just one man. That's right. So, folks, we're so glad you joined us today for this special program about Ida Eisenhower and our Why Like Ike program. We enjoyed bringing it to you for Eagle Communications. I'm Dennis Weiss, William Snyder, Pam Sanfilippo. You have a great day.